Alright, so practice version of exam 2. Let's look at the first question. So since we did easy derivatives on the quiz, uh, we have to do chain rule questions here. Alright, but I think they're fairly easy chain rule questions. Let's just start with the first one. So we have this, right? y equals cosine of tan x. So you know, let me just use the chain rule really carefully to do this one. So let's think of it as y equals cosine u, where u is equal to tan x. Okay, and now we'll just use the chain rule. Okay, so when I do y prime, it's going to be the regular derivative of cosine, which is minus sine. u stays the same, and u prime pops out. Okay, and now you can just finish up by putting in what u is and what u prime is. So um, u was tan, so I'll just write tan back here. And so if u is tangent, then u prime is the derivative of tangent. And on the previous quiz, we learned that u prime is secant squared. All right. So this is the answer to 1a. Negative sine of tan x times secant squared x. All right, I'm going to push that down a little bit. Uh, how do I do that? Like this. To make room to do the next thing. Okay, now let's look at uh, part B here. <laughs> uh, I guess I want this. Okay, so this is going to be quotient rule together with the chain rule. Okay, and as always, I'm going to remind you what the quotient rule is, even though it's printed on the back of your eyelids by now. You take the derivative of f over g, then that turns out to be f prime g minus f g prime divided by g squared. Okay, all right, and I'm going to push that down too. Okay, so that's the rule I'm going to use. And let's see what I have here. So obviously f is going to be the thing on top. So it's the derivative of 3x minus 2. Well, Sir Stoutley, it's just 3, right? And so now I multiply 3 times regular bottom, 2x plus 1. Now I put in the minus sign. And the rule tells me now to leave the top thing as it is and take the derivative of the bottom, which is where the chain rule comes in. So let's see if I can do that. So I'm supposed to be taking the derivative of 2x plus 1. So the 1 half comes down. I have 2x plus 1 to the minus 1 half. And by the chain rule, the derivative of this stuff comes out, right? And the derivative of that stuff is just 2. OK, so actually this 1 half and this 2 are going to cancel. But I don't think I'm going to rewrite this stuff over again. So I'll just leave it the way it is. And on the bottom, I have to write g squared. When you take the square of a square root, the radical just goes away. And so on the bottom, I have 2x plus 1. OK, so we just did part b here. And that's the answer to part b. OK, so let me scoot it down again. I hope I'm not going too fast. I guess you can pause it if you want to stare at this for more time. Um, OK. <clears throat> All right, and C is a chain rule question, of course, and it has this weird exponent, square root of 7, but I know that that's just a number, so I'm not going to get freaked out. I'm just going to treat it just like a regular number. Maybe this is a good one to do using u. Okay, so let's do this one carefully. So I'll write this as u to the square root of 7, where u is x plus 1 over x squared, Okay, and so what is u, what is y prime here? It is going to be square root of 7 times u. Now I have to do this really ugly thing. You take 1 away, what is, what is square root of 7 take away 1? It's just this horrible thing like that. That's the best I can do. And uh, so here I write u prime. Okay. And all I have to do now is plug in the stuff. So what was u again? u was x plus 1 over x squared. And so this is the new exponent. And what is u prime? 
Well, here's u. So u prime is going to be equal to 1 minus 2 times 1 over x cubed. Whoa, where did that come from? I think everybody knows, right? So it's just that fate has made me teach calculus for a living, and so I, I can do this in my brain. But this is the same thing. This thing is the same thing as x to the negative 2. And so what happens when you take the derivative? The negative 2 comes down and becomes a negative 3. And x to the negative 3 is just the same thing as uh, 1 over x cubed. All right, and so let me write that in here. So 1 minus 2 divided by x cubed. And that's the, uh, that's the answer for c. And so we're really we're really trucking right along. Um, maybe I'll just leave this up on the screen uh, for one sec. Da da da, da da da. Okay, and let me get rid of it and do the next one. Okay, so now there's a little note about this one up at the top. You can see it says, assume that m is a constant. I'm talking about this m. All right, so I'll just assume that it's a number like 2. Um, all right, so this is going to be quotient rule combined with chain rule. All right, and, and do I have to, I guess I should write the quotient rule again. So uh, this is this. So I'll get ready to use the rule. And maybe I should copy this over again, just so you um, your brain like recognizes it as a fraction more. So it's like this, right? It's just sine mx over x. And so we're ready to go. So what is y prime? Okay, so first I have to take the derivative of sine of m times x. So that's chain rule question in and of itself, right? So first I take the regular derivative of sine, which is cosine, and mx stays the same. Now here's the tricky part, but the chain rule, the derivative of the inside pops out, right? And what's the derivative of m times x? It's m, just like the derivative of 2x would be 2 and so forth. All right, and now I have to put the uh, times the regular bottom, just following the, following the chain rule. Now I say minus, I'm going to be running out of space. Uh, so minus, what is it now? Regular top, sine mx times the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1. Almost done. I just have to square the bottom. OK. And that's it. No big deal there. And that's all of number 1s. So I can leave. All right. Good. It's done.